This isn't your town anymore, so get. Or next time, you'll really get hurt. This is Ed McMahon. It looks as if we have an anything can happen night planned for you on the Tonight Show. Johnny Carson will be here just 30 minutes from now to welcome lovable Don Rickles, Chris and Peter Allen, and Dr. Joyce Brothers. So join us all for the fireworks on the Tonight Show, the late night place to be, right here on NBC. You can change that. Do something instead of just talk. Send a contribution to the United Negro College Fund. Congress has passed the open housing provision and the whole civil rights bill. We'll have that story and others from the national and international scene. And we'll take a look at all the Milwaukee news coming up next on the Channel 4 Report at 10. And we will hear from this darling twosome. <laughs> What do you know? Thank you, sir. Uh, Henry, were any ball games rained out today? No, Bill. 20 were scheduled and 20 were played. The weather's good. There's 161 more to go. Can you guarantee it's going to continue? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> and we'll hear the results of the voting on the big question. Do you think baldness makes a man more attractive to women? Uh, all of this is coming up next on the Channel 4 Report at 10. Stay with us. Happy days when your old sergeant shows up in your office and he's looking for a job. Or when the muscle man is decked by a 97-pound karate expert. Or discovering Gettleman beer. Flash past your eyes, Gettleman has real keg flavor. It's the toast of fine beers. Happy days. Pell-Mell Gold 100s is extra long at both ends, so it filters farther for a milder tasting smoke. Puff for puff tastes milder than ever. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John McCullough. Congress today passed a civil rights bill with a sweeping ban against racial discrimination in the sale or rental of housing. House members voted to pass it 250 to 171, while federal troops patrolled the Capitol grounds because of violence in the Capitol after the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. The Senate had passed essentially the same bill earlier, but after months of dawdling around. The bill now goes to the White House, where President Johnson will sign it. He said today he was pleased with its passage. Today, the nation's Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1968. And this is a victory for every American because the only true path to progress for free people is the one that we will take when this legislation is made the law of our land. Through the process of law, we shall strike for all time the shackles of an old injustice. 
After a year and a half, the bill will cover about 81% of the rental and sale of housing, all of that handled by real estate agents. The only exception is in the private owner selling property himself, and he cannot advertise in a discriminatory manner, like for sale to white only. Despite today's action in Congress, Milwaukee Alderman Mrs. Val Phillips, who's tried for strong open housing ordinances locally, says she will keep trying. Oh, it doesn't change the picture in Milwaukee at all because uh, even though we are those of us active in the, in the, well, I should think the whole country would be rejoicing now that the, the uh, Congress has acted. Unfortunately, it's going to be a rather slow process and it will take three years for really uh, substantial coverage. So I think uh, it does then give an opportunity to state uh, legislatures and city uh, government, municipal government, to take their fair share of the load and to do uh, what they ought have done before. And it kind of divides it up, and I think this is only fair. Are you still going to introduce a new bill on Tuesday? Oh, I plan to do that because I think this is the time to do it. I think that um, there's a very good possibility that well, it looks to me very hopeful that something uh, could come out of Tuesday's meeting. Um, uh, I, I plan to proceed as I had, you know, said I would. Milwaukee Alderman Mrs. Val Phillips obviously suffering from laryngitis. The timetable for the open housing provision again, all housing with some federal government involvement, owned, financed, or insured, will be covered when the president signs the bill. On January 1st of next year, the bill will cover multiple unit housing and single-family housing owned by contractors or individuals. In January of 1970, everything else, unless a private owner sells or rents himself. This portion of the Channel 4 report is brought to you by Standard Oil Division, American Oil Company, and we shall have more in a moment. <laughs> Hear that? That's my husband. He and the boys think they're helping me by doing the dishes. And they are. They're helping me by getting rid of all my old dishes. Now, if that sounds crazy, let me explain. It all began when... when our standard oil dealer showed us this set of fine china. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Keep it up, boys. You're doing fine. And look at this. And listen. Every time I buy $3 worth of gasoline from our standard oil dealer, I get this four-piece place setting for just $1.29. And as you see in the picture, you could also get the accessory pieces to complete your set. Just ask your dealer. Compare it with china that costs much more. It's called Platinum Star Glow. And I just love it. But these dishes, I wash. <laughs> 100,000 Allied troops swept hills and jungles in 11 provinces around Saigon looking for enemy troops that had escaped earlier drives. The U.S. command calls it the biggest operation of the war. Only scattered resistance was reported. American forces in Vietnam are now commanded by General Creighton Abrams, a tough 53-year-old aggressive officer who punched a hole through German lines in the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. The appointment was announced in Washington today by President Johnson. And there are all sorts of cities now being mentioned as possible places for peace talks in Vietnam. The latest suggestion is New Delhi, India. State Secretary Rusk was asked today about the status of the peace talks. Well, we'd like to see them begin promptly. Um, we are in touch with Hanoi, as the President indicated yesterday, to uh, fix a uh, time and place. Um, as of this morning, uh, there's been no final conclusion on that. Are you confident that there will be talks in a few days, sir? Well, I think you'd um, better use the word that uh, Hanoi uses, and that is contact, because they seem to draw some distinction between a contact and talks and negotiations. Uh, they've indicated uh, contact for a very limited purpose. That has to do with the uh, question posed by President Johnson in his uh, speech on the 31st of March about the need for some mutual restraint. Mr. Mr. Secretary, do you see any evidence on the ground of restraint on the side of the communists? Not at this point. Their infiltration continues at a, perhaps at an increased rate, and um, we expect uh, further fighting um, in South Vietnam. How about restraint in our part with the biggest military operation in the war? Well, uh, after all, uh, the uh, Tet Offensive was um, pretty far-reaching throughout uh, 
South Vietnam, and uh, some of those elements have been uh, near the cities, and an effort is now being made to get these Viet Cong, North Vietnamese forces back out away from the cities and um, in a more remote area, more remote areas. So I wouldn't look upon that as anything more than uh, normal conduct of operations against an enemy that hasn't let up in one, deg in one slightest degree in its own operations. Today, Kansas City officials hope to pull National Guardsmen out of their strife-torn city, but those hopes were burned up tonight in more violence. At least four persons have been killed in Kansas City, a guardsman and a 12-year-old boy shot and wounded. Countless fires are reported burning. Earlier crowds pelted police cruisers with rocks and bottles. Police have now closed off a four-block section and are searching for snipers. An all-night curfew has been imposed. Another curfew is in effect in Trenton, New Jersey, where last night's violence closed schools today and brought in National Guardsmen. Some 47,000 Guardsmen are on duty in 15 states in the United States and the nation's capital. 20,000 regular Army troops are also patrolling Washington, Baltimore, and Chicago, where things are generally quiet, as they are in Milwaukee. New York Mayor John Lindsay has asked for a special meeting of the President's Commission on Civil Disorders. He says the Commission's earlier recommendations must be Im implemented to avoid further troubles. The President and Executive Board of UAW Local 75 have asked American Mo Motors workers to report for work at their regular shifts tomorrow. Meanwhile, the company says the unauthorized walkout that stopped production at the Milwaukee body plant has now ended. AM said nearly all of the second shift employees have reported for work. About 200 commandos and members of the NAACP Youth Council arrived back in Milwaukee today following a 16-hour bus ride from Atlanta where they attended the funeral of Dr. King. We went out there without singing and took the whole funeral procession. It had to be beautiful. Everybody stopped and turned around and listened to their singing. Father James Gruppy was on the second of five buses to arrive at St. Boniface Catholic Church, and he was asked if he was pleased with the funeral services. Oh, it was uh, excellent. Was the proceedings as appropriate as you would have them, or as black people would have them be? Well, I, uh, I, we couldn't get close enough to the stage, but we uh, didn't see uh, the leaders of the civil rights organizations there, Floyd McKissick and... Stokely and some of the others, we thought that uh, black people living in poverty were the ones that uh, well, should have had perhaps a more prominent place in the proceedings. Uh, these were the people for whom King worked and whom he loved, uh, and uh, we did not see them you know, on the stage. There were a lot of political opportunists we felt that uh, got undue recognition. Wells Junior High School, a scene of vandalism and a near ride over soul food six weeks ago, had more trouble today. About 20 apparently well-organized youths smashed windows and set fires in wastebaskets shortly after 1 o'clock this afternoon. School officials say the 20 were joined progressively by about 75 more, and the mob spilled out into the street and then peppered the exterior windows with rocks. Police arrested 14, and 50 more may face school disciplinary action for not going back to school. One girl suffered a cut on her leg after apparently kicking in a glass door panel and a news photographer was hit in the head with a rock. Vacationing kids at Fort Lauderdale are playing with a successor to the hula hoop. It's called the bump ball, a lumpy thing that looks like a volleyball with warts. Holding the ball between them with their bodies, dancers gyrated while the music plays and the crowd cheers. No hands are allowed. More after a message from Standard. St. Louis. Gateway City. Got its name from a king. Gave its name to the blues. In St. Louis, Missouri drivers say, show me. And standard oil dealers do. You can't beat Standard for convenience. They've got stations everywhere you look. The more you drive, the more you realize that final filter makes a difference. Good reasons why. In mid-America, twice as many drivers choose Standard over any other brand. You expect more from Standard. And you get it. 
The newsreel returns in a moment. This portion of the Channel 4 report, the Standard News Roundup, was brought to you by Standard Oil Division, American Oil Company, and its dealers, who say good motoring to you wherever you drive. Please drive carefully. They invite you to discover America. Find out why you expect more from Standard, and you get it. This is the foot that kicked the skate, that swung the door, that hit the vase, that tipped the plant, that pushed the light, that struck the picture, that toppled the table, that knocked the radio, that scared the dog, that bumped the chair, that shoved the piano, that collapsed the wall, that belonged to the lucky guy who was insured by Continental Insurance. Continental doesn't just insure the ordinary things that can happen. We can even insure the things that just can't happen. But they do. Look for your Continental agent in the yellow pages. Now, here's tonight's Channel 4 newsreel. A giant 15-ton, 17-inch thick, 8-foot-tall bank vault door was installed today at the new Marshall and Ellsley Bank Building downtown. It took one whole day to lower the door from the lobby to the lower level, another four days to hand the door. Despite its great weight, the door is so perfectly balanced when it's hung, it can be moved with one hand. Last September, the seventh grade pupils at St. Boniface School began a project of making banners to honor those who suffered for civil rights. Tonight, they completed them and hung the pennants in the church. The children got a $75 donation from a mission group at Cardinal Stritch College and raised 150 more for the material. The students took their themes from Negro spirituals, church songs, freedom chants, and life itself. At a mass celebrated by four priests tonight, the banners were presented to Father Gruppy. The banners will hang indefinitely at St. Boniface as a tribute to the civil rights cause. And some little girls already have their Easter bonnets. Toby, a seven-year-old, 2,300-pound elephant, will try to make it to the Easter parade. There is a prior commitment, though. She is going to model at a Republican fundraising dinner. That's our Channel 4 Newsreel for tonight. The editorial, more news, the results of voting in the big question in the sports news all coming up. But let us turn now to an invigorating period in our program presided over by Bill Carlson. And that dot's still around Sheboygan. Exclusive radar weather brought to you by Butternut, the coffee served in the finest restaurants. Sir? You brought a sad thought to my mind, John. Last night while we were on the air, we learned there were numerous little sprinkles operating around Milwaukee. Our face would be red, except it's become perennially red <laughs> over the years, so we'll just have to kind of fluff it off in the normal manner. But there are no showers around tonight because skies are fair. There's very few around the country. As Henry said, uh, there were no ball games called off. If you don't believe me, that's pretty good proof. And with the weekend and the Easter vacation coming up, how are people doing? Starting at Montreal, the high 50, at Boston, 63, at New York, 66, at Washington, D.C., 68, at Asheville, 54, off base down here because they had some cloudiness and some showers. Now that rain belt is over here just along the coast of the Carolinas and extreme eastern Georgia. 84 at Tampa. Florida's had its cold weather for the year. You don't have to worry about it. Only... Uh, 64 at New Orleans, again, showers and clouds, though they have disappeared since the time of heating during the afternoon now. Little Rock, Arkansas, at a 76. Down at San Antonio, some kind of a festival, I forget what they call it, going on, uh, World's Fair, 75 anyhow. They're picking up. They had quite a bit of cloudiness also. Denver at a 71. So did Albuquerque. And the Black Hills, Rapid City, at 73. In Montana, Billings, 76. In Oregon, Portland at a 65. Seattle, a 59. Los, uh, San Francisco, a 68. Los Angeles area varied from 94 to 96. That's a little overdoing it. And Las Vegas warmed to 81. Phoenix to 89. And when we get in the center part of the country here, Kansas City, 73. 
Milwaukee and uh, Chicago had 58. That's at the lakefront in Chicago and at Mitchell Field here. Up to 54 at Park Falls, also at International Falls, and a 64 at Minneapolis. You can see this was a cooler part of the country also. Barring this front coming in, you can see that with that easterly movement of the atmosphere, we should be warmer tomorrow, and that's the forecast. Edmonton had a high of 45. Our friends in Alaska are not having very spring-like weather. The high in Fairbanks, 15, with a four below zero for a low. And over in Anchorage, the high was only 28, with a low of 15. That's a sign we're going to be warm, too. Got any Easter presents to give somebody? Give them an electric percolator. Pretty simple. We're not selling the percolators, but that's a sneaky way of plugging Butternut's new percolectric coffee. And uh, the percolator, of course, should go along with it so you can use the coffee. But anyhow, you'll find that this is a special blend that is made especially for the electric percolator. It's something special, too. When you try it, you will find out why. They take the best coffees, but they blend them and grind them especially for the percolator. And man, it is good. So, in short, they tailor make this percolectric for the electric percolator. So next time you buy coffee, if you have an electric percolator and are not of a mind to give one away for a Christmas or a birthday or an Easter present, Try Butternut's new Perk Electric. Butternut is the coffee delicious. This front is not expected to affect us until it gets down across here and probably Saturday or Friday night. So the next two days are expected to be dry in our area with the possible exception of the Lake Superior neighborhood on Friday. And they should be quite mild, barring lake breezes. Sunny and warmer is the call for tomorrow. No more of those heavy clouds with the Virga hanging around like we had today. Southwest winds, 10 to 18. Flying weather should hold up. Partly cloudy, continued mild on Friday. 40 down at Mitchell. It was 39 down there an hour ago. It's 44 here at Radio City. Lows should range from the low to middle 30s. And the highs tomorrow should be around 70. We're kind of susceptible, though, to a southeast wind here in Milwaukee. It might be a bit cooler. That's the weather story. Now the sports final with Hank Stoddard. Tired of sharing your deodorant with women and kids? Have you had it with those weak family sprays? You're no kid, you need a man's deodorant. And here it is, new command Tahitian lime deodorant. A deodorant so masculine it's not recommended for women. Made for a man's kind of action. Tahitian lime for a man's kind of cool. Let the wife and kids keep their weak deodorant spray. You, take command. Guess who's got a new special formula shampoo that really does something about oily hair? Alberto VO5. New VO5 for frequent shampooers builds up rich lather. A super lather that gets out excess oil and leaves your hair more manageable. Keeps it nice a day or two longer. Oily hair problem? This shampoo is made specially for you. New VO5 for frequent shampoos. Joins regular and dry. Hi, I'm Hank Stoddard, and this is the Blatt's Sports Final. A well, brand new baseball season got underway today, but there were some pretty familiar names grabbing the starring roles in those opening games. Names like Carl Yastrzemski and pitcher Dean Chance and another pitcher, Sonny Siebert, and another pitcher, Hubert Humphrey. Well, uh, Humphrey didn't stick around very long. He just threw out two balls, but he didn't allow a hit either. The vice president tossed, tossed out the traditional first ball. In fact, he threw out two of them in that presidential opener in Washington. The senators managed to emerge with both of them, with Coach Nellie Fox, first of all, and then outfielder Hank Allen grabbing the balls from the scramble. But the senators couldn't do as well with Dean Chance's pitching, and the Minnesota Twins emerged with a 2 to nothing victory. Chance hurled a four-hit shutout while teammates Harmon Killebrew and Bob Allison hit home runs. Sonny Siebert threw a two-hit shutout at the Chicago White Sox, and the Indians emerged with a 9 to nothing win before a small crowd in Chicago, only 7,756. Carl Yastrzemski looked like he was after another MVP award. He hit two home runs in leading the Boston Red Sox to a 7-3 to win over the Tigers. 
Mel Stottlemyre allowed only four hits and rookie Frank Fernandez homered as the Yanks edged the Angels one to nothing. Newcomer Don Buford had a couple of hits and starred in the field for the Orioles in their three to one win over the A's. Meanwhile, over in the National League, Tony Perez and Tommy Helms hit homers to account for five runs and the Reds dumped the Cubs nine to four. Three runs in the ninth, two of them on a double by Jesus Alou gave the Giants a five to four victory over the Mets. The Braves and the Cardinals, well, let's see, we got a final score just in here. Two to one, the Cards scored a run then in the bottom of the ninth inning to defeat the Braves. Two to one, they were uh, tied in the till of the ninth. The Astros scored three on the bottom of the ninth, uh, a triple there by Bob Aspermonte, the big blow, and they won over the Pirates five to four. And the Phils and the Dodgers are just underway on the West Coast, and the Phils did not score in the first inning. In the National Basketball Association Eastern Division Finals tonight, Philadelphia defeated Boston 115 to 106 to tie up that best of seven series at one game apiece. And speaking of basketball, the Harlem Globetrotters are in town tomorrow night. One of them, Hallie Bryant, arrived ahead of the rest of the team and he decided to give me a few lessons in the art of handling a basketball. Well, I don't think I'm quite ready yet to join that touring team, but I suggest you see the Globetrotters in action tomorrow night. They take on the Washington Generals there's a preliminary game, of course, ahead of that. The Packers play against a group of Milwaukee radio and television personalities. And that group will be captained by our own Judy Marks. Packers will also be on hand earlier for autographs and some picture taking at 645 at the arena. Brad Lucchini and Blanton Simmons of the Marquette team will be playing with the Washington Generals against the Globetrotters. And of course, Mel Walker, the uh, Wisconsin football player who suffered that severe injury in the season as a major recipient of the gate receipt, so it looks like a big night tomorrow night at the Milwaukee Arena. One of the really big ones, the Masters Golf Tournament, gets underway tomorrow in Augusta, Georgia. In final practice rounds today, Jack Nicklaus and Tom Weiskopf both shot 70s. But the man who was really impressive was Billy Casper, fresh from a victory at Greater Greensboro's Open. Casper had a 67 and said, I never felt better about my chances. And speaking of chances, chances are you won't be able to resist this particular flavor combination. from the tap to its now. But what if you're not where the draft beer is? Just open a bottle of draft brewed Blatz. Blatz is the beer brewed for people who like draft beer, naturally pasteurized. Yes, Blatz always tastes like it's straight from the tap. Milwaukee's finest beer. And that's the sports news for Blatt's, Milwaukee's finest beer. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I did the editorial this time of night, and now tonight, another member of our sports department, Lyle Aldridge, is going to take over. John, you just may never get that job back. We have to give you boys something constructive to do other than report on schoolboy games. Schoolboy <laughs> games. Well, at least there's no killings going on and things like that in the sports world. <laughs> uh, tonight's Channel 4 editorial was written and is presented by a member of our sports staff, defensive end of the Green Bay Packers, Lionel Aldridge. John Wooten of the Cleveland Browns is executive director of the Negro Industrial and Economic Union. On Monday, John sent a plea to other professional athletes to move into the streets and ghettos and try to stem the tide of racial unrest which has swept American cities since the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. John's message went out to such men as Gail Sayers of the Chicago Bears, Bill Russell of the Boston Celtics, and former fullback of the Cleveland Browns, Jimmy Brown. Wooten's message said in part, we feel in the last few days the rioting and looting that has taken place in this country has been totally wrong. We understand the frustration and we understand the sorrow and shock. However, our move at this time has to be one of dignity and pride, befitting a man that carried the torch of pride and love to all mankind. It is up to us to make real the plans he left with us. We don't want homeless people and we don't want soup lines. Don't be a part of making this thing happen. Let us make this pledge that we will make our city and ourselves proud to have known and loved the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. We here in Milwaukee can be proud that the uncontrolled violence of recent days 
took place in Chicago, Washington, and Baltimore, not here. The people of Milwaukee have seen fit to practice restraint and to mourn Dr. King as he lived in peace. Martin Luther King died trying to gain the freedom that was promised us over a hundred years ago. He knew that promise would be kept sooner or later, not by violence, but by love and understanding. Lionel Aldrich of the Green Bay Packers and our staff with the Channel 4 editorial, a statement of opinion on the part of Lionel and station management. fabrics treated with Scotch Guard brand fabric protector. Spots and spills simply bead up and sit on the surface, waiting to be wiped or blotted away. When you shop for furniture, fabrics, or wearing apparel, make sure you see this tag. Scotch Guard protector isn't a miracle. It just makes life a little easier. Tonight's big question, do you think baldness makes a man more attractive to women? In Milwaukee, the Q-heads can take heart. 57% said yes, bald men are. 43% said no. In Kenosha, the other way around. 25% yes, the other 75 think hair of your own or a rug is better. New record on the New York Stock Exchange today, another 20 and a half million share a day with the Dow Jones Industrial Average gaining eight and a quarter points, ending at 892.63, an average share up 38 cents. The weather tomorrow is? Mild, John. Sunny and mild tomorrow. Continued mild on Friday. It looks dry for our neighborhoods both days. Thank you, Bill. Finally, Ben Crumpton of Tampa put an ad in the daily newspaper announced he was withdrawing as a candidate for president of the United States. Reporters reminded him he wasn't one in the first place, but he said he dropped out because everybody else is. He also said his decision is irrevocable, maybe. That's our Channel 4 report at 10. Sleep warm. I'm John Cullen. Logan David makes wines with excellent taste. The rich taste of plump, juicy Concord grapes. The bright taste of a fresh pink rosé. The fresh taste of pure blackberries. The light taste of golden cream sauterne. And a tart, sweet cherry taste. For wines with all the delicious taste of the fruit from which they're made, taste Mogan David. Flowers bring Easter joy home to those you love. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Yes, this Easter, say it with flowers. See or call your florist. What we're looking for, Milwaukee Journal Station in Milwaukee. it would head right for Sinclair. Only Sinclair has the best mileage ingredient there is, plus NC7 to control damaging engine deposits. Sinclair, the better gasoline. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severance from the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Don Rickles, Chris and Peter Allen, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and model Mita. Johnny Carson will be here in just one moment. The Baker's Bride. Baking the baker a cake? It's the discovery dessert from Betty Crocker. Good enough to make a baker jealous. The first and only fluffy chocolate frosting and a yellow cake mix that blends perfectly with eggs for richly moist flavor. Betty Crocker yellow cake and fluffy chocolate frosting. Good enough to make a baker jealous. When the flavor's this exciting, you can bet it's Betty Crocker. 
six onion lovers, two fresh Bermudas, and something new. Fresen's chopped onions. Can onion lovers tell the difference? Make a sauce with fresh onions, now a sauce with new Fresen's onions, big juicy onion chunks. Onion lovers dare you to tell the difference. New Fresen's onions from Betty Crocker. Dog can't see anything. No. What does that dog know what he's eating? Walking around like this. Where's the food? <laughs> Feed that dog an old slipper. <laughs> what kind of a dog you say that was? A Lhasa? Lhasa Apso. Now explain that again to me. Yes, it's from the ancient city of Lhasa in Tibet, the high monastery city. Are you putting me on? No, no. Would I lie to you about a dog? Yes. <laughs> yes.